So Robert, um, can you tell us, uh, how did you come to connect with Eileen and her work? Well, Kathy, it was, it was through this book, Opening Doors Within. Um, I honestly can't tell you who sent it to me. Um, in fact, I, I wonder if it was maybe sent by Angel Mail. Because <laughs> uh, this is the sort of book that seems to land on your lap, you know, when you most need it. it it's one of those books that seems to have a life of its own you know, without any significant um, marketing, it's, it's sold millions of copies, hasn't it? Yes, I believe so, yes. Yeah, and, I, and obviously it, it arrived at the right time and um, I picked it up and I started to, you know, I started, to, well, to read it and then um, decided to do what the book was inviting me to do, which was to read a passage every day, 365 excerpts one for every day of the year and Kathy as I, as I read the excerpts I began to wonder if I'd been given a special edition because um, <laughs> each excerpt seemed to be completely appropriate to me and my life as it was unfolding I, I began to wonder if maybe overnight somehow you know the the, the message that I needed was somehow downloaded onto the page but it just seemed to be super relevant. That was the first thing, very, very relevant, but also very practical. And I'm a great fan of practical spirituality. So that was really um, how, how I think I first came across Eileen. And then it would have been in, I think, 2004, when I received an invitation from Michael Hawkins to give a, uh, a keynote at a well-being conference uh held in the universal hall in Fintorn. Mm. that was my first visit to Fintorn, and well after that it was just easy to say yes to come back again and again and again i came back in 2008 i think it was with my wife holly and it was her first visit mm. and um and um, I was I was involved in another conference at the time. And um, by the end of the first day, um, Holly was already um, talking to local estate agents and wondering if we could move here and be <laughs> here and, and everything else. So Holly you know, loves Findhorn as, as much as as much as I do. And um, and that's why we try and spend as much time as we can up in Findhorn through through the year, um, which we love to do. Which is always wonderful when you're here, Robert, because you you contribute so much and inspire the community, and you've given many, many, uh, many talks and seminars here, which for which we're very grateful, by the way, and uh, quite inspired. Um, is there a particular um, memory or influence that Eileen is that comes to you that that Eileen's uh, uh, inspiration has? in some way influenced? Yeah, I mean, firstly, I mean, I felt very fortunate to, to, to meet her in person. Mm -hmm. I think that's, mm -hmm. of course, very significant. And um, it would have been my friend, John Willener, who, mm -hmm. who took me around for a cup of tea um, mm -hmm. one day to meet Eileen. And um, it just was, um, it was one of those moments where um, I knew I would remember it always, and um, I just knew it was a very significant moment. Every now and then, you know, my own guidance will tell me, "Pay attention, Robert. You know, this is a this is a big moment," <laughs> and um, and uh, and it was. It felt like that for sure. Uh, I then say, quite honestly, that um, the relationship, firstly, to this book was important. I've felt quite honestly that opening doors within, if it had been written in the 15th century, like um, Revelations of Divine Love by Julian Norwich or The Interior <laughs> Castle by Teresa of Avila, I'm, I think we would be heralding this book in the same light because it comes from that lineage. It's, there's a Christ lineage here. This is mm -hmm. Christian mysticism, um, I think at its clearest and, and at its best. And I think that what really influenced me and, and helped me was that Eileen 
gave me the confidence to trust my own inner listening more. And I think that that's the great service that she gave us. So when I read this book now, uh, I'm I'm reading the book and I but at the same time, I'm using it more like a tuning fork for tuning into the higher mind to tune into the Christ mind. So I think if I was to say a big thank you to Eileen for one thing, it would be that her example gave me the confidence to trust that inner listening and a connection to the Christ mind mm. really is available to everybody. And you don't have to be you know, special in any way. You just have to be willing and, and practice. And I think that's what Eileen did. So that would be my big you know, a big thank you to Eileen would be would be for that. Oh, thank you for highlighting that, Robert, because I think that basically is the 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 seed that's flowered in all of us related to Eileen's contribution uh, and and the way she lived. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think we just sometimes need that confidence to know that that um, that wisdom and inspiration truly are available to us. And mm-hmm. and that it is available, and 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 we we just need to say yes and have that confidence to trust it's here for us. And mm-hmm. Eileen's yeah certainly been a big help in that. So Robert, the foundation. So you were here at the new year, I believe you said last. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. we we brought the new year in, and we also uh, celebrated uh, Dorothy's one hundredth birthday. Oh. Uh, <laughs> over several days as well. And so God bless Dorothy. Um, uh, it's wonderful you were here for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Right. How did you feel uh, Dorothy's work inspired your lifestyle? Well, for me, the big thank you I'd have to say here is to Dorothy is really that my relationship to trees... <laughs> my relationship to you know to to plant life my relationship to nature is absolutely um inspired by dorothy i i mean here uh in london we go for a a walk most evenings in chiswick park and there is a beautiful yew tree that um that just stands near the entrance of the park and one of the first things i do is i go up and give that yew tree a great big hug and I don't think I would have paid attention to a yew tree in the way that I do now if it hadn't been for Dorothy. Mm. So I think that what happened for me with Eileen and Dorothy is we have this extraordinary blend of of almost like a shamanic Christ. It's Mm. like a spirituality that isn't above nature. It's infused into nature and it shines out of nature. And so therefore, you know, they were just the most wonderful double act in this way, in that they were offering us, you know, a non-physical spirituality and a physical spirituality, Mm -hmm. a matter of spirit and matter coming, a marriage of the two coming together. So, Mm -hmm. um, and I've spent a lot of time with Dorothy over the years, as has Holly and the children. And, um, And absolutely the feeling of tuning in to to nature and knowing that it's possible to have a conversation with nature um, and with the spirit of nature has made life, I think, so much more interesting. Mm. And, and it supports the movement that I think is happening in the world at the moment, which is a movement where our spirituality isn't so much about transcending or withdrawing. Our spirituality is much more incarnational. It's much more an embodied spirituality. We're meant to bring the spiritual into the world now. Mm. And, and for, for that reason as well, I would be say a, a great thanks to Dorothy because I felt that was very much part of her, her message as well. Come closer, come closer, listen to the guidance and then you know, be in the world with that guidance. Mm, beautifully said, absolutely beautifully said. And I must mention Peter just so that, you know, <laughs> we have the three, the, the seed of the three. Yes. Did you, did you have any relationship to Peter? I mean, he'd passed by the time you That's had right. arrived, of course, but. Um, no, exactly. How I, do you I, see I, him in that Christ consciousness, that blend? Do you have any feeling around that? 
Absolutely. And, and also from talking over the years with his son, Jonathan, as well, and, and mm. hearing so many of the great stories, um, it, it, um, it strikes me, I sort of think of Sergeant Pepper and, and the Lonely Heart <laughs> Band. You know? I sort of think he was like the sergeant, you know, and he was he was the one I feel that really um, recognized the spiritual talent. Hmm. and was able to deploy that spiritual talent in the world. So in that sense, I think he was, he was the one who really, if you like, was able to earth it and bring it together. I think, for example, the story of Universal Hall, which, as I understand it in the beginning, might have been a hall for 50 or 60 people, but it was like, no, 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 it's going to be for at least 300 people. And that sort of, you know, very sort of earthy Sergeant Major energy that has its place in this world. And it's needed, I think, for an incarnational spirituality as well. And so there's this feeling, even with one or two others who were there at the beginning, even for this, not a, a cosmic Christ, you know, a universal Christ, a Christ in nature, bringing all of this together, bringing it all down into the world. Um, how, how wonderful was that? It was just, it mm. was clearly a, a great team. Yes. And of course, back in the 60s, when they first arrived here, it was just it was unprecedented as far as the way they were working and uh, what their vision was. Yeah. And Kathy, you know, I speak to a lot of people, especially about the theme of purpose. I think purpose is on everybody's minds these days. I think maybe it's even more in focus now when you know we've been through everything that we're going through with COVID, when uh, we're going through everything that we're going through also with anti-black racism and all of the other big issues in the world today, including, of course, you know, the backdrop to all of this, of course, is the environmental crisis that we have. You know, it's like we're, we're arguing about how we might get on with each other. We might not even have a place to get on with each other if we don't pay attention. So, you know, in a sense, I feel that... Um, you know, the great work here for, for all of us is to have a sense of purpose and to commit to our purpose. And what I really have always appreciated so much about the example of the caddies and also and of Dorothy is that they were prepared to start small. Mm. And I think that if you have a sense of a big purpose, you must be prepared to start small. If you can't, if you're not prepared to start small, you'll probably not make a start at all. But my goodness, if you start small and you're willing then to follow that guidance, then look what can happen. You know, you, you start off by growing a garden and then eventually you, you create a community that's helping to grow people and uh, to help hopefully grow the world in this new direction of love. Mm, beautiful. Mm. Robert, what do you think the... Um foundation offers the world at this time, given its history and how it's evolved and, and how the world has changed. What now? I think the, the principles that Findholm were based on, and, and there are many, but I think we always like to talk about three of them. Mm -hmm. The first one being inner listening. I think that that really is, um, fundamental for our evolution at this time. Um, I think most of us understand that if we're on the spiritual path, we've worked it out by now that it's a good idea to tune into the mind of God before we turn on the media, for example. You know, we're not going to, unfortunately, um, get our wisdom from the media very much these days. You know, we have to find that wisdom closer to home and then contribute to the media you know, contribute by all means by putting our message out there. But I think it starts with a sense of inner listening. And if we think of all of the great, truly the great leaders in this world, many of them have had a period of confinement. We think of for just in recent times, we think of a Nelson Mandela, for example, um, or we think of uh, Martin Luther King's last book, um, Where Do We Go From Here? That was, he took himself into voluntary confinement and he wrote a message that he left the world with. Um, so confinement is this wonderful opportunity, I think, to, to do some inner listening. And I see that as a key. 
Then, of course, we have the second principle, which is that work is love in action. And I think this is uh, more and more relevant than ever before. One of the things that I particularly love about Findhorn is that I think there's a common agreement that love is not just a meditation. It's not just a prayer. It really is an action. And indeed, in the uh, the beautiful uh, original garden, one of the gates has that lovely saying, love in action on it. Mm. And I do feel that love is, of course, the great commission. But I also think that love is the great politics. It's the chief politics. Um, it's the creative spark. It's the spirit of leadership. I believe it's our true soul's purpose. And ultimately, I think love is the highest activism on the planet. Mm. So... Anything that we do that is love-based is almost by definition a form of activism in this world. It's a revolution. Every time we choose, we choose love. The third of the principles is the co-creation with nature. And this very much for me is about this embodied spirituality. Um, Richard Rohr, um, the Franciscan um, priest, uh, talks about incarnational spirituality. I like that phrase very much, that we call upon a spirituality in these days, which is actually brave enough and capable enough to take on the challenges of the world. So rather than, again, helping us to transcend or get out of here, a withdraw, mm. um, it does help us to retreat for a while, to gather our forces, to gather that clear sense of listening, to maybe get a vision that will, will um, um, inspire us. But I think after that, um, incarnational spirituality does rather send us back out into the world. And one of the things that I really, really appreciate about Findhorn is just how many people have come to Findhorn for a while, and it might only be, it could be for a weekend, it could be for a week, it could be for a few months, but Findhorn seems to one way or another send everybody back out into the world and it sends them out into the world with a mission and that mission might be for example um, the trees for life mission yeah it might be something to, it, I mean there are so many I and mean, that's what's so exciting uh, I think about Findhorn you have this sense that um, there are so many people who have been um, given the information they needed for the next step in their purpose. Mm, mm. Um, at present, I'm beginning to put the first, um, first thoughts together for a book on purpose. And I was writing the synopsis and I basically just found myself um, really quite spontaneously thinking of all of the friends that I've met at Findhorn over the years who are busy out in the world doing something wonderful, inspiring, unique, and, but the thing they all have in common is they got some inspiration from a trip at, to Findhorn. Mm. So my sense is that I think what Findhorn has to offer is becoming more relevant as time goes by. What Findhorn offers each of us is something to be discovered. I don't think it's necessarily for us to even be able to say what Findhorn has to offer each of us. But all I say to my friends is, is that when... In Findhorn, the veils are thin. The listening is rather easy, easier than maybe other places sometimes. And the angel of Findhorn is going to look after you. What she's going to do for you, who knows? How she's going to do it, we might not even know. It might even be that you won't even know until you return back home again. But there will be something that's going to happen there that will have some some sort of an effect. And I love, I love watching that. And I love watching how Findhorn is this place for spiritual activists. And, um, and I see it that way. And I think the other thing that why I'm so happy to celebrate Findhorn as well is that I feel that what Findhorn does is, I, the metaphor for me is a lighthouse. I really see Findhorn like a lighthouse, mm -hmm. standing there on the rocks, sort of towards the top of the world, but radiating this light in a very quiet and powerful way. And, um, and it offers us invitations. There's no, to me, I don't experience a dogma. I experience it as invitations. And the invitations are to participate in this cosmic universal 
um, purpose that is unfolding through acts of love and acts of light in the world. And that's, that's sort of how I see it really, Kathy. And I think it's just, it's a truly, um, it's wonderful in how, in that Vindhorn also can offer us blueprints, examples, mm -hmm. um, without a sense of ownership. There's no sense of, there's no sense of a, of a copyright on, on anything that Findhorn offers. It's much more generous than that. Um, and it's reaches, is far and wide, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yes, wherever, it is. wherever I go, I'll, um, when I'm giving a talk, I'll often mention Findhorn and um, I'll ask if anybody in the audience knows about Findhorn and up go their hands. And usually after the talk, we all just share stories about how happy we are uh, to know about Findhorn and, and to participate in the Findhorn story. Thank you, <laughs> Robert. For yeah, I mean yes, it's so it's so many things you said have uh, dear meaning inside my heart that uh, you know that you've articulated and brought forward. So it's highly inspirational to to be here at this moment and realize you know that Fintorn is alive. It's well. It's uh, it's regenerative every yeah. moment. And you know, Robert, if I might, you mentioned the angel of Fintorn. Mm which um, has special meaning in my heart, for sure. Uh, is there something more that you'd like to, to offer around that? Well, I have to say, when I'm, when I'm in Findhorn, if I think of Dorothy again for a moment, there is something about the land of Findhorn, for sure. And, and it does feel a little bit like a psychic well where you can drop your buckets into the well for a while and when you pull those buckets up, there is some, some living water, shall we say, fresh living water that supports you in your spiritual inquiry and maybe helps you to see something that was familiar to you, but in a whole new way. So it helps to deepen your practice in that sense. Mm -hmm. That said, I'm not so sure Findhorn is as physical as it appears. I have a feeling that it's not that physical and that's when I can't help but think of the angel of Findhorn and this sense that there really is a a holding that happens um, I know for myself and, and, and Holly and the children when we get up to Findhorn that first night of sleeping in Findhorn we call it the Findhorn flop because <laughs> we properly flop into the arms of what feels like a holding and, you know, it's very easy to feel like they are angel wings. Mm -hmm. So there is this presence there, which I'm, I'm, I can't define it fully for, for you, but I just know it to be like the presence of an angel. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I take that angel again to be of the highest order in the sense that it exists for everybody and it mm -hmm. is universal. And, but universal, not even just on a planetary level, but on a cosmic level. I feel mm. it's that big. And I feel that um, she's available to each and every one of us, regardless of um, our, our race, our culture, our creed. It, it's, it's that generous and it's that available to each and every one of us. And that's why I'll often say to people, you know, if you get to Findhorn, that's a bonus. But please know the spirit of Findhorn is available to you, you know, everywhere through, for example, opening doors within or uh, come closer by Dorothy. Um, or, of course, even just through all of the great social media work that happens through through Findhorn as well. But it's this sense of that if you can, as Eileen was encouraged to do, be still and know, you know, that I am God, you will experience that sense of um of support and what i would say is as a little experiment for people is there's no harm in just asking the angel of findhorn to sit with you next time you do a meditation and see if maybe the angel of findhorn could support you in that meditation somehow wonderful uh, thank you robert thank you for joining us and thanks thank you for the inspiration and and uh you know uh, the meditation and i hope to see you again here soon Yes, uh, yeah, yes, we're, we're, we'd love to have you and Holly and the girls to join us again <laughs> as soon as possible.
Yeah, thank you. We hope to be with you as, as soon as we're allowed. Yes. Yeah. Is there is there any last thoughts or inspiration that you'd like to share with our 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 uh, uh, Findhorn network? Yeah, may I? Maybe I could give give the last word to Eileen. Maybe I could share another one of her readings from um, from Opening Doors Within. That would be great. That would be just lovely. Okay. Okay, well, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I've just flipped open, this will do. Okay. All right. The new heaven and the new earth are here now. It is simply a question of recognizing and accepting what is happening and raising your consciousness so that you are fully aware of all that is taking place within and around you. If you are not aware of all that is taking place at this time, it does not mean that it is not happening. It simply means you have shut it out by your own pride and arrogance, which have blinded you to the wonders all around you. Therefore, keep raising your consciousness. The higher you raise it, the more clearly you can see the truth. And there is nothing in the way to blot out the full vision. When you have beheld the wonder of that vision, then bring it down and live it. Let it become part of your everyday living. Unless a vision is manifested in form, it does not become reality. I tell you to behold my new heaven and new earth manifested in form now. So be it. So be it. I mean, it's fabulous, isn't it? It is. Robert, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. All the best to your family. Bless you. Thank you. And to See you, you soon.